Hello, I'm Commander Bob Meter of the Columbus Division of Police Property Crimes Bureau. Hi, and I'm Amy Hamilton, the Warden's Assistant at the Chillicothe Correctional Institution. This video has been a collaboration between the Columbus Division of Police and the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction on how burglars commit burglaries. The idea behind this video originated with longtime Columbus police officer, Officer Norm Russell, who thought that the community could better protect themselves from burglars and thieves who prey on our residents of our community by asking those who've actually committed the burglaries how they did it. Through this collaboration, and most importantly, the inmates who have volunteered how they committed the crimes, this information will better protect our community. The Chillicothe Correctional Institution became involved with this project in February 2014. Inmates from Chillicothe and Marion Correctional Institution were selected and screened for participation. Each is serving a sentence for a property crime such as breaking and entering or receiving stolen property. The interviews have been conducted by Officer Norm Russell and Detective Dave Samuel, a seasoned investigator as a seasoned interviewer. I would like you to take the words of these inmates and take a serious look at your own residence and place yourself in the shoes of a burglar. Apply what the inmates have said to your own residence, find the weak spots, and make the corrections. If you would ever become a victim of a burglary or theft, there is something you can do now to help law enforcement find and return your property. You can document all of your valuables on a web-based inventory system called Report It, so a detective can distinguish your property from others. This is a free service, and will keep a secure online record of your valuable property and make it accessible to you alone. If your property is stolen, you will have accurate records of the make, model, serial numbers, descriptions, and photographs of these valuables. The website is reportit.leadsonline.com and is shown here. I would like to thank the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction for making this video possible, and most importantly, you for taking the time out of your day to protect your home, valuables, and family. Myself, I'm gonna go up and knock on the door. If I don't hear nothing, nobody answers, or I don't see no lights come on, ain't no dog in there barking, if I don't see the, the wires on the windows for the, the, the alarm system, whatever, then uh, I can look through your windows. Like, when you're not there, shut your windows. We can't see what's in there. I just knocked on the door, and I think there was probably a couple of times where someone did answer the door. And I just said, oh, I'm looking for some such and such, and I now make up a name. Now, here's this creature habit thing, too, with the people. If the people in the neighborhoods were more aware, and I walked up to your door, and I got on leather coat, I have all the street gear on that associates me with the streets. And I'm asking you, I tell you, I'm looking for such and such. What do you say to me as an aware neighbor? No car outside. You look out there, there's no car. It's just me at your door. Knock on your door and you open your door. And you say, can I help you? And I say, I'm looking for such and such. I'd probably say they don't live here. Well, that's the first right. answer. Right. What's the second answer? Um, Can you give me their name? Right. Okay. Uh, can you describe them? Uh, do you have the right street? I mean, ask. Ask a couple questions. Ask questions, because the conversation is going to reveal itself. You're going to look at me and say, "Hey, this guy don't belong here." Maybe I might call the police. Maybe I might follow you out in my neighborhood, but you getting out in my neighborhood, you know. But people have to be more aware, that's all. I'd say it all depends on how bad a person wants in that house, about how bad they know something's in there. Like I said, if you can look through the windows and see if there's this real expensive stereo system, if that's what they want, or you can see this jewelry stand over here, or just anything like that. that uh, 
somebody that wants money or a drug addict can see that he can get something out of, then he's going in there. Uh, the majority of the time, though, they're not going to, if it, it does work. If you've got everything dead bolted and alarms and, and everything like that, then a person's not going to, he don't want to have to take the time to try to get that, especially if you can't see in there and even know anything's in there. It's the same thing I was saying about the cars when you lock your car. Just because you lock it and you got your purse sitting right there, that guy that's, that's really got the cravings and everything, forgetting that, he's going to bust that window out. So now you just lost your money, your wallet, purse, and your window you got to pay for. So just keep everything hidden in, in your car if you're going to leave anything in your car. I, I suggest you don't because we're going to get in and get it. I think, uh, I mean, what sticks out in my mind is uh, like when I did my burglary back in the day, it's, uh, I think older people is more of a target than middle class, age, and younger people. Older people is, uh, I guess, people think it's more easier, you know, to do to burglarize them and get away with it and all that. Whatever way we could. If the door was unlocked, then we'd go in that way. Uh, if the window was open, going that way. Second, a lot of people think second story windows don't need to be locked. You need to lock them too. Wire them up with uh, security too because we can climb up a climb up a antenna pole or anything to get onto this level here for the second story and go on through that way. There's been uh, basement windows that, that are unlocked because they don't think the basements, you know, and, okay, I got the door locked to the inside coming up the basement. Well, if you're inside the house in the middle of it, nobody's home, and the other houses ain't going to hear you kick that little door in. So you got to keep all that, everything bolted. If you know the area, you know the people, possibly, you know, that's in these neighborhoods, and you have a feel for the comings and goings, then you can fit yourself in. Most burglaries are done from opportunity. It's not something that's calculated. Some are, you know, but most burglaries are random. A lot of times it would be like just the neighborhoods where I live, just walk down the street and uh, like, you know, look at houses and uh, if there wasn't no cars in the driveway or something, maybe go up and knock on the, uh, the door. And, uh, you know, if somebody answered, I would probably say, you know, you need your grass cut or something, you know, around the house or something, ask them a question and, um, and just look for like, you know, how many people was there and all that. Or maybe if it was like one or two people there, just stay back like down the street a little bit and wait for them to get into their automobile and leave and didn't know that, you know, they're gone. Maybe if there's uh, an air conditioner in the window or something, something easily to like pull out and just go through the window. People sometimes just leave their door open and it's just a screen door like in the summertime. And you know, some people will leave and just leave their door open and just it'd be a screen door where you can look right in the house. But most of the time it would be, you know, a nice house with like a, a newer car in the driveway or something, you know, and maybe one or two people there to where you know, they probably got some stuff saved up from over the years or whatever, you know, but, and then just sit back and wait for them to leave, you know, get in the car and leave. If you can't get a dog because you got little kids and stuff like that, then get that security system set up. Um, if you got really valuable stuff at home that you don't want to take to that safety deposit box or whatever, then really deadbolt your, your doors, put extra locks on them. So, and make sure your, your windows are always locked, make sure your, your windows are covered during the day when you're gone so nobody can't scope out what you got. That's the biggest thing. Like if I had something I didn't want nobody to see so they wouldn't steal it, I'm gonna make sure I keep it hid all the time. Good locks. If you know you're not gonna be in the home a lot, install a, a security system. Because most security systems if you're not, as I said earlier, a professional burglar that has experience in electronics, you're not trying to go in a house that you know the alarm is off and the police are on their way. So a good alarm. And sometimes set it off so people know it's there. Don't just buy it and never set it off. If I hear it, I'm, that house got an alarm. You know, them little signs they put out, 
Sometimes it's a lot, well, most times it's a decoy because I've done it and I was a burglar. Windows, windows that are, that are accessible without a ladder, secure them. You know, fix them where they can't raise all the way open. And if the glass is broke, the alarm's going off anyway. Um, if you're in the home and this happens, make noise. Just make all the noise you can. Don't go get an AK and start spraying the neighborhood. But make a lot of noise. And let them know that you have a phone in your hand, which is more powerful than anything else right now, a telephone. And it should run your burglar off. Um, work out something with your neighbors that they keep a watch on your property and you keep a watch on, the, on theirs when you can. And don't be afraid to report suspicious characters in your neighborhood that you might not have seen. Don't just look out and say, hey, ah, because you never know what he's there for. It's always good to just ask. Police pull up on you, what are you doing in this neighborhood? I'm on my way out of it. Yeah, signs, I think signs uh, throws people off a lot. That does burglary because, you know, like uh, beware of dog or uh, no trespassing and stuff like that. It's like, you know, it, it, it wakes you up a little bit like, you know, beware of dog, you know, they might have a mean dog. or A lot, a lot of times, if it's a lot of people's at work in a community and the burglaries happen, but uh, I think like if the alarms, most of the alarms are silent alarms, and sometimes people get in and out and before, you know, the officers show up. But I think if they had like loud alarms, like, you know, that would really get real loud and uh, uh, wear the community or something like that, it would be probably more, you know, uh, the burglars would be more aware of stuff like that, you know, and it would throw them off a lot more probably light uh, just around the house, you know, or in, in the front and the back and, you know, lights on inside and outside, yeah. A lot of your commercial establishments, they're usually in groups. Like you might have this store, this establishment, this establishment, this establishment. So the burglary part of it, the chances of it happening is limited to a specific time frame. Usually from, in the winter, it gets dark at 5.30, business is closed between five and six, or eight o'clock, 8.30, and it's pretty dark outside. During those hours, that's when businesses are most vulnerable. And a lot of times people go through the ceilings or them little ducks up in there, some's gotten stuck up in them. For them, lighting becomes a major factor. If you light that area up, it holds them back. Maybe they may figure out another way, but lighting plays a big part. Those cameras I've seen, they play a major role in society overall. I mean, they began when I was out and it's really doing it now. Those cameras inside the buildings and outside the buildings, when you get caught on film, you can't say, hey, that's not me. It's hard to say that then, right? So yeah, get the cameras. Um, security, hiring security sometimes helps for nighttime burglaries, you know. Most nighttime burglaries at home, the home is empty, you know, but when you're in an establishment, I mean, the home is occupied. Establishments, they're empty. So there's less of a fear of running into people, for one, but when you set up barriers, like this is my establishment, you gotta go through this, 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 and this to come in here. It's not worth it. You know, for, the, for one that doesn't want to go to jail, at least at that moment, you know, get away. Uh, 
uh, most of the times was, uh, you know, when I was doing them, uh, VCR, stereos, uh, jewelry, jewelry, one of the main things, cash money, old coins, guns, you know, stuff like that. I have had times where I've stolen guns. That's another thing. If you got a gun in your car, lock it. Or don't keep the gun in the car. I know a lot of people do that for, you know, they got con carrying uh, permits. Um, other states, I know we're in Ohio, but Tennessee, everybody keeps a gun in their car. So I'd end up with all these guns and I'd pawn them off to the dope dealers or whatever. And there's been times that I've had that gun in my hand. And uh, by the grace of God, I didn't go do nothing bad with it. You know, I've thought, I was sitting there thinking, dang, I can go rob something go to the store and rob somebody and, and, and I mean like I said by the grace of him I didn't have it in me to to do that but other people would have that and that's you know what I'm saying you you got to keep them guns locked in houses and whatever you got them in because nobody else needs to get hurt hurt yourself all you want don't hurt nobody else I'd say 85 percent of the jewelry still had the tag on it with the prices of everything I mean it was a big jewelry stand so I got like thousands of dollars worth of jewelry in my and if you got that much stuff why you got it in there like that it's a target for us to a lot of times just uh in a like in the community where i'm from you used to be able to like jewelry guns and stuff like that old coins or anything there would always be people in the neighborhood that would if they was getting a deal on something they would buy it you know or have somebody take it to the pawn shop and maybe give them 10 or $20 once they sold it to the pawn shop or pawned it or whatever. Trying to make some money, you know, trying to make some money off of something, you know, like hardly no different than guys selling dope or whatever, you know, they would buy guns for maybe $20, $30 and sell them for 50 or 75 you know, things like that. Easily small stuff, accessible stuff like uh, old coins, jewelry, cash, obviously. Um, gaming systems that are small that somebody might be able to pawn off or a drug dealer might want. Uh, I was never looking for anything big. You know, it's it just if, if you've got anything that...